Hello and welcome to this film which is all about using burettes. Um, we'll see how you fill a burette and how once you've emptied it you're going to have two readings which will allow you to obtain a titer and we'll have a look at a few things that you might do to try and minimize errors. Okay so you might not be surprised to hear that um, the first thing we're going to look at is rinsing. Okay, um, just like with a volumetric pipette, it's important what you rinse a burette with. And because you're filling it with a solution whose concentration you want to know or be very confident of, um, you don't want to dilute that solution or add any contaminants to it. Okay, so in other words, um, using distilled water uh, to rinse your burette is not the best idea. Okay, because any droplets of water that you leave in there. Um, are going to dilute the solution that you fill your burette with. However, some people do rinse the burette with distilled water first, but the important thing is to rinse it with the solution that you're planning on filling it with before you fill it with that solution. Okay, so um, without further ado, um, let's have a look at some of the things that we might um, do when we're filling a burette. Okay, so here we're looking at a burette tap, which is closed when it's across the flow and it's open when it's in line with the flow, it doesn't matter which way you turn it, okay, but it's a good idea to shut it before you start filling your burette. I'm just going to put some hydrochloric acid in a beaker because it's quite a lot easier to pour the liquid from a beaker into the burette, but I'm still going to use a funnel just to make sure I don't spill any liquid around the sides of the burette. Now remember, um, before you fill it for the final time, you're going to rinse it, so I'm emptying all the liquid out here. Just speeding that up a bit because it takes a little while for all that liquid to empty out. And here we go, we're filling it for the final time with the solution that we plan to have in it. Now I could take a reading now, but it would be foolish to do that because I've got a great big bubble in my jet. So before I take my initial reading, I'm going to just make sure that there's no air bubbles by running through a bit more liquid from my burette. So now all I really need to do is to... Uh, record what my starting volume is but I ought to take my funnel out before I do that because any drops that fall out of there will affect it. Okay so as I've said there um, you may choose to use distilled water first of all to rinse your burette but your um, rinsing before filling really ought to be done using the solution that you're filling the burette with. Um, just make sure that when you do fill the burette having kind of emptied it out after rinsing it. Make sure when you do fill it, you've filled up the jet and that you're reading um, the uh, volume that you're starting with from a level that's kind of parallel with the meniscus. And of course, notice there's no funnel here. Okay, now I suppose emptying the burette is a fairly straightforward exercise. You just open the tap and let the liquid run out. But as we've just said, really important when you are actually removing liquid from your burette so you're actually trying to measure out a volume of liquid it's really important that you haven't got any drops falling into your burette whilst you're going so do make sure you remove the funnel now by the time you've um, finished your titration and you've got a few sets of results you'll end up with something that you ought to put in or some data that really ought to be put into a table okay so we've got the final volumes measured up here and the initial volumes down there notice that every one of them is written to two decimal places okay so although the markings on your burette might only have one decimal place it's normally possible to see if you've got um, halfway between two markings or if you're exactly on a marking okay so when you're figuring out your titers make sure that you give them to two decimal places right so this one would be, rather than just being 8 millilitres, it would be 8.00. And this one would be, um, well, that would be 6.20. Okay. And what we're looking for when we do um, a titration is two titers, two or more titers that match to within 0.2 of a millilitre. Okay. So this one would be 6.25 millilitres. And we could stop there. We've got some consistent or concordant results, but we might choose to just do another couple. So maybe this this one would be uh, 
and you might think, oh, well, that's a bit different to the ones I've just done, so let's do this one as well, and that would be 6.30. Okay, so at the end of it, once I've obtained these titles, I choose the ones that match, and I just go with those two and that one there and average them out. Okay, so there's really just one film left now that we've seen how to use a burette, and that's um, how to carry out a titration. So in that film, we'll assume that you've already used your pipette and your burette, and we'll just see what's, what happens when you mix the two liquids that you've got together with your indicator.